the show for you. Tune in to learn from Miss Rainu. Kids have fun. They feel special in town. Needles in the making. Let's have a ball with with what is the show for you. Tune in to learn from Miss Rainu. Wait, wait, wait till I put it on your plate. You gotta wait until I cook it. Man, my mom said wait. I don't think I'm able. I wanna see some food on top of the table. Give me pancakes and syrup made of maple, or maybe a scoop of soup from the lady. You gotta wait until I cook it. Oh, you gotta wait until I cook it. You gotta wait, wait, wait till I put it on your plate. You gotta wait until I cook it. Yes. What are you looking for? You want this one? Okay, give me your cup. Give me your cup. I'll put it inside. You want more? Come. I put more. Are you happy now, Cookie Monster? Until I cook it, you gotta wait. Until I cook it, you gotta wait, wait, wait. Till I put it on your plate, you gotta wait. Until I cook it, you gotta wait. Until I cook it, you gotta wait. Until I cook it, you gotta wait, wait, wait. Till I put it on your plate, you gotta wait. Until I cook it, 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 you gotta wait. She specializes in working with clients from the South Asian and Indian community. Today, she is going to help us answer questions on how to best work with kids throwing tantrums. Welcome to our show. Thanks for having me. 
my first question is, are tantrums and having anger fits genetic? So for kids and adults, it's not really a genetic um, behavior to have tantrums. It's something that is a learned behavior. Um, sometimes if children see adults acting out and yelling, they might do the same when they're trying to get their way or frustrated. But usually tantrums come out when children don't have the words to let us know what they want or what they need. And why do you think people compare the toddler years to the teenage years? I think they're both pretty difficult stages of development. There's a lot of change going on when the toddlers grow up. They're still trying to figure out how to communicate what they want, what they need, and um, they want to also exert some of their independence. So a toddler might need learning how to put on his shoes, and he doesn't want his parents' help. So if they try to help him, he might get upset. Um, the same way a teenager, you know, they start driving, they get their driver's license, and they want to go to the car out, and they don't want their parents' help anymore, and they want that independence. So there might be some conflict there when the parent wants something to do certain way, and the teenager wants to have a little bit more independence. When do you think kids like these start feeling like they want more independence? I think it starts pretty early on. I think once kids start even walking, they want to kind of explore and, you know, be out there and doing different things. Um, I think as parents, we're always um, needing to supervise and um, making sure kids are safe and doing age-appropriate things. So, you know, a, a one-year-old, two-year-old is walking and can explore their environment and stay you know, safe that way. But if we're talking about an eight, nine-year-old, they could be, have more um, freedom, like let's say they're at a park or they're at a friend's house. Um, we don't, parents don't need to be so strict on the supervision for safety. Do you think that when kids have stress at home or at school, it affects their mood overall? Absolutely. I think stress, anytime people feel stressed, we're not feeling our best. I think stress makes our bodies more tired. Um, people tend to get more irritable and easily upset when they're feeling stressed. Um, if, I, I often talk to parents in my practice, if there's conflict in the home, um, meaning that there's some problem or some fighting between parents, that um, that could easily have some impact on the children. A lot of times parents don't think that the children are paying attention or listening if there's problems, but I think that does cause stress for children. Our children are always listening, so we need to be very careful. So to add on to that question, many people feel that when they're going through a divorce, their kids start acting up too. Is this true? It's very true. I see this all the time in my practice. Um, Divorce can be very difficult for a family. There can be a lot of confusion for the kids about why this is happening. Where am I going to live? Why why can't mommy and daddy get along? Why can't we stay together as a family? Why do we have to move? There could be a lot of questions that come up for the kids, and um, it can be very upsetting for them. And when those they don't know how to manage those feelings very well, they start acting out. And I feel like these questions could be answered by counseling. But why do you think some South Asians shy away from counseling? I think, I think there's a lot of emphasis to try to work it out in the family and to try to get support from our family and keep it private. I think that's really important. I think some South Asian Indian clients don't understand how confidential therapy is and um, you know, clients that come to me, I, I, do, I really take the time to explain that nothing that they say in my office will be shared with anybody else. And, it's really important that we create that environment of confidentiality and safety so that they can talk about what's really important and that we get the support that they need. Now, for parents, do you have any tips on how to handle when kids have tantrums so that they don't get too out of control? First thing parents need to do is say, tantrums, you know, everyone starts to get upset, and I think once the parent gets upset, now the child's upset, the parent's upset, this is not going to help anybody. So I really work with parents It's really important that parents think about not giving in every time a child does a tantrum. You know, oftentimes a child might want to have chocolate for breakfast. That's just not going to happen in most households. And so parents need to kind of um, set the rules. And, you know, when you say no to something, offer an alternative. No, you can't have chocolate for breakfast, but let's make pancakes. So thank you so much for being on our show. And from everyone here at Women's Words, we really enjoy having you. Thank you so much.
billion shades of beautiful. Say no to skin color discrimination. Dark is beautiful. A wow initiative. We're fighting on which channels to watch, so we both keep on, keep on grabbing the remote from each other. comes in and then, and then she says stop fighting and choose what, what channel both both of you like so pull it from him and then we, we keep on fighting and I, I keep on wrestling him. You know, your kids have been coming to Genius Kids. Of course. The importance of public speaking, you feel, is in today's competitive... Right, definitely. Actually, uh, Dita has been coming uh, uh, since uh, she is like two and a half, uh, uh, two, two years, three months, right? So we came and saw you first when uh, uh, we had, uh, she was like less than two years, Triumphakas on, on his way out. So um, 
ever since we like genius kids not the no, it's not the fact that uh, uh, just curriculum curriculum anywhere they will get it right if not uh, at two years two years they will definitely learn that to four years or five years public speaking is really really important because the way they have been molded uh, uh, they have real good confidence to speak on stage even now i'm a little bit nervous but they won't be all these kids are not that nervous to talk in front of the camera that's what genius kids got them into and it's really really helpful wherever they go and